warm welcome to Joel and the Bruce of Hemphill. Well, I feel the presence of the Lord in church tonight. Good things happen in this presence. People get healed, saved, set free, encouraged. There was a crowd of people Gathered round the house one day For the man who sat within Was speaking pain and fear away I know this healing Jesus Will cast your suffering out for like on that day so long ago The healer's in this house The loving Jesus lives in you To comfort and to heal By faith you will receive it don't go by how you feel You can rise above the pain You can smile again For Jesus Christ, the healer, lives in you If you're facing situations you cannot understand Things aren't working out The way that you had planned Relationships are strained And you're living on the brink You need a touch from it's closer than you think A loving Jesus lives in you To comfort and to heal By faith you will receive it Don't go by how you feel You can rise
I just changed my hairstyle. That's what she's trying to tell you. I've been doing a lot of creating. His face got bigger. <laughs> it takes more sunscreen than it used to. But I like uh, it. You know, you have to adjust. Okay. If you've married 53 years, you have to make adjustments. But the Lord is faithful. Amen. And I believe he wanted the, the love to last as long as the marriage. And the marriage to last as long as you live. It doesn't always work out that way. But thank God by his grace it has for us. I saw a bumper sticker the other day. We see a lot of bumper stickers go. We travel a lot. And this one said a successful marriage is just a union between two forgivers. Now you think about that, because that's the only way we're going to make us forgive one another. We're not perfect. Heard about the preacher got up on Sunday, and he's going to preach on perfection. He says, anybody here perfect? Raise your hand. A man over there raised his hand and said, sir, are you perfect? Oh, he said, no, sir, I'm not, but my wife's first husband was. <laughs> You're glad to see her tonight. Would you make her welcome? Thank you very much. And it's a joy to be here. I, we came through Asheville, and I have a lot of memories there because I lived there when I was a teenager. And uh, that was a few days ago. But anyway, I lived there with the Happy Goodman family, and we were on WLOS TV. We had a daily television show. Did they, is WLOS still in there? Yes. Oh, yes. my. Right. Good. But anyway, I was going to tell you this. Um, we, we had our daily television show, and we had this big <laughs> gathering out in the woods somewhere. Brother Joe, do you remember where that was? Anyway, it was way out in the woods. You can't remember that far back. <laughs> well, I was going to tell you this. I, I was two. Yeah. <laughs> he was there, but he was too young to remember. We advertised it and advertised it. We went out there and cleared a bunch of woods, and we had a big old gathering, a picnic, and people came from everywhere. There was hundreds and hundreds of people came out to our singing that time. And this, uh, I met this brother Joe in uh, Pigeon Forge just a few weeks ago. And he said, you know, I went to a thing where the Hack and Goodmans were out in the woods that time. I said, I was there. Betty Jean was there. Betty Jean was there. Betty Jean came to hear us sing when I was with a good Cousin Wilbur. Cousin Wilbur. Does anybody remember that? Or is anybody, anybody else? I see some people. Ah, good grief. That's great. Well, anyway, let me say this. My husband writes all the songs that we sing. Every song that we sing, those, all of those that are recorded out there, ex with the exception of maybe one, he writes all of our songs. The Lord has blessed us beyond measure. And the songs have taken us around the world. Uh, we are so thankful for God's gifts and for his blessings. And I thank the Lord for my man, Joel Hemphill. Do you want to give it a go? We're happy to have, as uh, Brother uh, Jim already mentioned, but I'll mention again, our friends Dan and Sharon Gill. We're happy to have them. I think it's Brother Jim. It might have been Brother Joel. But anyway, these are great people. Drove all the way from uh, Nashville to be with us. They have a wonderful church there, but also they have a website. And it's 21st Century Reformation. Well, Briska writes some articles for them and uh, other, other folks write. And uh, so you'll be blessed by that. I want to uh, reinforce you, me, us with the truth. John 16, verses 32 through 33, Jesus said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace, in the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. 
So Jesus gave his disciples some bad news. It was just, as we would say, soaking in on them that he was about to be crucified. And they were going to be scattered. But he reinforced them with this truth, with this knowledge. That I have overcome the world and because I have you shall. And so I would like to give you some truth tonight that I believe that will reinforce you in your Christian witnessing and your Christian walk. You know, if you look at this awesome, beautiful church building, I was blessed when I walked in here today. The foundation of this church is based, basically concrete. I wasn't here when it was poured, but I'm sure that the basic foundation of this church is concrete. But I'm also pretty sure that it's reinforced with steel. A friend of mine who does concrete said, Joel, you can lay a piece of steel in it and multiply its strength tenfold. So we have some basic Christian understanding. The virgin birth is foundational. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is foundational Christian truth. The coming kingdom of our God on planet earth, Jesus said the meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus Christ is going to reign on this planet for 1,000 years. And I believe that's soon to come. And that is foundational Christian truth. But I would like to lay a little steel in that foundational truth tonight and talk about something that Christianity has had a great amount of confusion on. And that is who is the one most high God of the universe. Jesus said, John 14, 6, No man cometh to the Father but by me. But if you ever really thought about that statement, the object is to get to the Father. Think about that a minute. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You see, Hebrews says Jesus is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to God by Him. And then 1 Peter 3.18 said Jesus suffered to bring us to everybody say God. Would you say that? God. If anybody understood it, Peter did, right? Acts 3.13 says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has glorified His Son Jesus Christ. Now, I'd offer a pretty good reward for anybody who could find a verse where Jesus ever claimed to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the Son of God. How many know He's the Son of God? Supernaturally conceived, virgin born, sinless Son of God, Savior, Redeemer, Messiah, soon coming King, the only way to the Father. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are we in agreement so far? Yes, sir. But here's what God said to me. He said, study the scripture because I'm going to reveal myself to you in my word. Now let me say this. I've written a 390 page book with a thousand scriptural references to back up what I'm saying. I didn't write it from visions and voices. I wrote it from thus saith the word of God because that's all the authority that I have. As the Holy Spirit helps me understand what I read in God's Holy Bible. How I many know that? It's not tradition. It's not what somebody said from the past. It's not how long we believe this or how long our church has held on to it. It is thus saith the Word of God. So if the Bible says it, I'm authorized to say it. God said to me, study the Scripture I'm going to reveal myself to you in my word. God told me the day will come when you will write a book about my glory. 
I studied, I said, hey, that got my attention. When I began to study the scripture, everything I could find about the glory. I studied the Shekinah glory in the temple, the tabernacle. I studied the glory that shone around the angels when they announced the birth of our Lord Jesus. And I studied the Old Testament where it says the earth will be filled with the glory of God. It says the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. But I couldn't figure it out. So I finally just had to kind of put it aside and rest in the fact that he told me I'm going to reveal it to you in my word. Well, rocked on 19 years. That may sound like a long time, but how many know that Abraham and Sarah waited, 20, waited 25 years for us? Right? One of the hardest things God's people have ever had to do is wait. And I have to tell you, it was hard for me to wait. But one day in 2005, I was reading in the fourth chapter of Acts in the King James Bible. Now, I read other translations, and I like other translations, but I normally read the King James. I like the poetry and all that, so I, I, I like the King James. In your King James Bible, it tells how the disciples were arrested and charged, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus, and they were released and sent back to the ghetto. And they prayed. And they prayed to God, the Creator. Please be patient with me, but they did not pray to Jesus. I did, but they didn't. And we're going to take this, thus saith the Word of God. Not what we've been doing a long time, or what somebody else did, what the apostles did. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And so in the fourth chapter of Acts, these apostles that had just spent three years with Jesus and saw him ascend in the glory did not pray to him. They prayed to God, the creator, and twice they mentioned thy holy child, Jesus. How many of you Bible readers know that? I mean, that's what it says. If you have your Bible, just open it to the fourth chapter of Acts and you'll see all well, verses about 23, 24, I believe they prayed and they, they're talking to God the Father. And they're mentioning thy holy child, Jesus, or thy holy son, Jesus. I said, wow, there's something wrong with my understanding. And I began, you know, there began to be a, a crack in my tradition. So I said, I need to go a little further. And I went to the 42nd ch chapter of Isaiah. You might want to read this when you get home, but the first seven verses are a prophecy 740 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God says in these verses, I'm going to send my servant. He's referring to Jesus. He calls him his servant. In fact, Jesus referred to himself as God's servant and Paul did as well. But anyway, he said, my servant, I'm going to send him. I'm going to put my spirit upon him. I'm going to put my word in him. Verse 4, he says, he shall not fail. So God the Father has already decreed that his son, Jesus Christ, is not going to fail in the task that he's sent to do. So the first seven verses are about our Lord Jesus. But verse 8 says, God the Father says, my glory I will not give to another. Please receive that. If you receive that, that will put some steel reinforcement in your concrete foundation. And help you understand who our one most high God, the king of the universe, is. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. That means king over every king on this planet. Daniel said to another king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, God had made you a king of kings. That's not king of the universe. That's king of this planet. And our Lord Jesus is going to reign for a thousand years king of this planet. But I said, wow. I've made him king of heaven. Please go with me to the first chapter of Luke, verse 32. And the angel appears to Mary and says, you found favor with God. You want to have a child? He says, 
the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 32. Please be patient with me. Can I just say this? There's not one verse in the Bible that promises Jesus God's throne in heaven. I'd give a dollar for another. Another amen. I want it. <laughs> He's at the right hand of the Father. Mark 16, 19 said when Jesus ascended, he sat down on the right hand of God. Is that right? Amen. Hebrews 10, 12 said, but this man, Jesus had been in heaven with the Father for many years, but this inspired writer of Hebrews calls Jesus this man four times. Jesus called himself a man. He said, if I had not done among them what none other man has done, they would not have known sin. The Pharisees took up stones to stone him, and he said, why are you taking up stones to stone me? I'm a man that told you the truth which I heard from God. Right? 1 Timothy 2, 5, there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the Man, is it alright if I say he's a man? The writer of Hebrews called him the, this man four times. The Apostle Paul called him a man repeatedly. Jesus called himself a man. I found over, I mean other people said, like Pilate said, behold the man. Well, I wouldn't take Pilate's word for it, but how many would take Jesus' word for it? Wow, some would. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm finding people, now hold on now, I'm finding people that seem like they've taken tradition over what our Lord Jesus said. Let me tell you what I found. In John 17, 3, Jesus said to the Father, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, Jesus Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Y'all still love? Amen. Amen. Is the bench getting hard? <laughs> Jesus said in John 5, 44, You Pharisees seek honor one of another, and you do not seek the honor that comes from the only God, the Father. So Jesus there is calling the Father the only God. Did Paul agree? He said in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Our Lord's many and God's many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ. Right? But he says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, comma, one God. And Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. And so here's what I had done. I'm confessing my part. I preached Jesus to the exclusion of the Father. The disciples didn't do that. They preached everything from God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? James said in his little powerful book, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Now, I saw Brother James Robinson on television a few months ago. How many know who that is? A precious man and a good teacher and I love him, honor him and all this. But he had a man on there who had written a book. And this man had taken his computer, he was a writer, and he spent a thousand hours grouping the sayings of Jesus. Marriage, divorce, heaven, hell, this, this, money. But he looked at Brother Robinson and he said, do you know what Jesus spoke more about than he did anything else? No. Well, he said he spoke more about his relationship with his father. He said, Why? Wow. He said, Brother Robinson, have you ever heard, heard a sermon on that? Well, he said, no, I don't think I have. Maybe this brother had heard one. 
How long has it been since you heard a sermon on the relationship between Jesus and his father? If Jesus spoke more about that than he did anything else, we need to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> Y'all pardon me. That's why I'm here tonight. I want to help you see the Father. See, if we're not careful, we will write the Father off with one verse, half of a verse that Jesus spoke in John 4. God is a spirit. We were at a big flea market in Texas had a day off three or four weeks ago. Ladies selling brittle for a church. Not very many customers, so I stepped up there and bought some peanut brittle. Sweet lady, we began to visit. I began to talk to her about it. The Father. Oh yeah, but she said, God is God the Spirit. I said, well, yeah, but that don't mean he's a nothing. <laughs> I gave her a book. Next day I came back, some of our material. She said, I want you to know I've really been enjoying that. Seeing the Father. So I want you to see the Father. Somebody said, is this a salvation issue? It could be. But it is for sure a worship issue. Because I realized that in my sincere desire to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, I had not only given him the Father's throne, but I gave him the Father's worship. Could we talk about that a minute? Jesus' greatest lesson on worship. Hold on now. High praise, honor, glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. He has awesome glory. We could take the next hour and talk about Jesus' glory. The brightness of his glory will destroy the Antichrist. John says Jesus began to do miracles and manifest forth his glory. He said to the disciples on the Emmaus road, should Christ not have suffered these things and entered into his glory? He said, you'll see the Son of Man sit in the throne of my glory. He said, you'll see me coming in my own glory. But he also said to the Father in John 17, Father, the glory gave me. So in Isaiah 42, 8, God says, my glory I will not give to another. But he's given his son, Jesus Christ, awesome glory, but it's a given glory. Would you agree with me that nobody gave God his glory? Would you agree with me that the Father gave the Son his glory? Amen. Hello? Hello. Right. I mean, I'm already told John 17, Jesus said, Father, that they may be with me and the Son, behold the glory that you gave me. So the Father's glory is un underived. It's self-consistent. It's just who he is. His awesome glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ has great glory. But it is his own glory. Here's what John said about it. John 1, chapter 1, verse 14. We beheld Christ's glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. What's Jesus' glory? The one and only time that God ever birthed a child from the womb of a virgin ever has or ever will that we have any understanding of. It was our Lord Jesus Christ birth miraculously, supernaturally from the womb of the Virgin Mary. Do you agree with that tonight? Right. He is the only begotten. But in Him, we're begotten. And 1 John 3 and 1 said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Let's talk about something that helped my understanding a lot. I referred to it for, in uh, Luke 1.32 where the angel says the Lord God is going to give unto this child the throne of his father David and Mary said I don't, I don't know how this can be. She says I've never known a man 
Listen to Gable. How many would believe Angel Gable? If he showed up tonight, I'd sit down and just let him speak. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. What you believe in? Yeah. Well, would you believe what he said in God's holy Bible? Here's what he said to Mary. She said, I don't understand this. And he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, D-O-K-I in the Greek, which means for this specific reason, this holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Did Gabriel say that God is going to move in your womb and come out looking like a baby? No. Come on, folks. <laughs> he didn't. Preachers are preaching that. Preaching God in diapers. God can't control his bladder. God, uh, who Mary's changed his diaper with dirty hands. I'm telling you, I, I could name them. I love them. I pray for them. I'm not against them. But I'm saying Christianity has followed tradition. Somebody told us that and we, we just believed it. And then they told us you have to take it by faith so you just suspend your mind. Just leave your brain at the door. Right? God never told us to suspend our brain. He's the one that said in uh, Isaiah 118, Come now and let us reason together, saith God. Isn't that right? Somebody said, well, oh, you can't understand the Trinity. No, you can't. <laughs> to have a Trinity... Be patient now. I've already told you that I, I had to make some adjustments. If you, if you just be open to thus saying the word of God and adjust your understanding, don't let your tradition get the best of it. But be open to thus saying the word of God, you'll begin to see what Paul was talking about when he said to the Corinthians, I have you to know the head of every woman is the man. The, I'm going to get off of that real quick. <laughs> the head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. Hello? You think Paul understood it? Sure he did. And so the angel says to Mary... The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore, for this specific reason, this holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. How many still with me? Hold your hand if you're still here. There's nothing more important. This will put steel in your concrete. Somebody said to me in Labrisco, what, what is this understanding? Betty, God opened my understanding. And I began to see things in the Bible that rocked my tradition. But I began to say, well, God, I have to put you first. I'll take you first. What you said about it. And I want you to know that it has put such joy. You know, a child that doesn't know their father is deprived to a great degree. Labriska came from a broken home. But thank God her parents made sure that she spent time with both. Because to really, 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 really understand who you are, you need to know your father. Now circumstances prevail. Some of you didn't. You turned out to be great people. But to really know who you are, the most ideal thing is to know your father. We cannot be the Christians that we've been called to be if we don't really understand who our Father is. Amen. Jesus said in John 4 to the woman at the well, Jesus' greatest lesson on worship. He said the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper, worshipers will worship the... Hello? Father. Father. 
For the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. How are you going to worship the Father if you don't have a clear understanding of who He is? I want you to know it has revolutionized our lives. It's revolutionizing the lives of other people. We've never been happier than we are right now in our walk with God, in our understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ, because when I thought He was God, then I believed that when the going got rough and He got tempted or He was crucified, He could, he could escape into Godhood. But I want you to know Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. He was really tempted. Hebrews 5, 7 says, Jesus prayed with strong crying and tears to Him. That's who I want people to see is Him. Hello? Did you know Him has a face? Did y'all know the Father has a face? Would you trust Jesus? He said to the Pharisees, Don't harm little children. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. And then he said in Matthew 5, 8, on the, in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They'd already been blessed to see Jesus. I mean, that was an awesome experience. Brother Joe, that'll be a great day for me and you. I want to fall at his feet and praise him. But he gave me a greater promise. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, the creator God, that spoke out on the, stepped out on the balcony of time and spoke the world into existence out of nothing with the breath of his mouth. Amen. <laughs> see, I, I made Jesus the creator. Do you know Jesus never claimed to be the creator? I better do a little love check here. Y'all still love me? <laughs> we're, uh, how many of you know we're still in the book? Now I'm just giving you a solid scripture. So take it up with the author of the book, all right? But Jesus never claimed to be the creator. When the divorce question came up, Jesus said, He who made them at the beginning made a male and female. And then he came back again and he said, God, who made them at the beginning. Right? right? And then he says in Mark 13 at the end time, and I believe that's close to where you and I are. He said there would be a time of trouble such has never been since the beginning of creation, which God created. I had one of the most famous evangelists in the United States on the phone the other day, and we are a few weeks back. We had a good visit. I love him. I've been knowing him since he was 19 years old. I was about 16, 17. I love him. But he argued me down that Jesus is the creator. You know it. I'm not going to call his name. I love him. But he just, you know, he writes study Bible, study courses, all this. He believed Jesus created everything. Jesus never claimed to be the creator. I'll tell you Jesus' part in creation, and it's awesome. He redeemed creation. Amen. Paul said Jesus is the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul talks about two Adams. The first Adam and the last Adam. He said sin entered in by the first Adam. Righteousness came by the last Adam. He said death came by the first Adam. He said resurrection from the dead came from the last Adam. Is that right? He's the second man, the last Adam. We made him the God man. Jesus used the terms Holy Spirit and Spirit of the Father interchangeably. He said... Do not, to his disciples, do not premeditate what you'll say when you call them before the council for your faith. The Holy Spirit will speak in you. Another place when he referred to it, he said, the Spirit of my Father will speak in you. Did Jesus call the Holy Spirit the promise of the Father? Yes, he did. 
Did you ever see in the Bible where anybody's on the Father's left hand? <laughs> no. Huh? No. Fourth chapter of Revelation 1 sat on the throne. Who is that? Lord God Almighty. In chapter 5, the Lamb comes in and stands and takes the book out of the hand of the one seated on the throne. That's who I want people to see, the king of the universe. Amen. Because Jesus said eternal life is in knowing Father you and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Now, one more thing about the Holy Spirit. I've got a book out there. Is the Holy Spirit the third person of God? Please get it and it'll help you because it's totally scripturally based. I'm writing a book now called Glory to God in the Highest because when the precious baby was in the manger, the angels were praising God, saying glory to God in the highest. So our Lord Jesus was in the manger, but our Lord God was still in the highest. Amen. Right? right? Jesus taught us to pray. What did he do? He said, when you pray, say it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He goes on to say, for thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen? Amen. We need to place the glory where our Lord Jesus placed it. He always pointed us to a higher. When we do that, it's going to be with us as it was with Jesus. Because the Bible said Jesus grew in favor with God. Is that what it said? Yes. As he walked it out in the flesh on planet earth, an obedient son, he grew in favor with the Father. How many would like to grow in favor with God? If we will give him the glory, that he demands and deserves. Give him the worship that Jesus said he is seeking. Let God be king of the universe. Our Lord Jesus, king of kings, Lord of lords, his virgin born son, our Messiah. But Revelation 13, 7 tells us what the end time message is for the entire world. Here it is. John said, I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel in the last day to preach unto them that dwell on the face of the earth saying to every nation, kindred, people, and tongue. Fear God. Is that right? That's right. Jesus didn't say fear me. He said, I'll tell you to fear, fear him. That's what I want people to do, pastor, to find out who him is, right? Y'all yeah. sure you're still up I want people to see him and grow in favor with him because the angel said the message for the entire world for the end time was fear God and give glory to him and worship him who made the heavens and the earth and the seas and the fountains of water. Psalm 33 and 6 said God created it all by his word, the breath of his mouth. Hallelujah. He loved the truth. How many love the truth? How many love the truth? Hallelujah. It's not about who Jesus is not. It's about who the Father is. Paul prayed in the first chapter of Ephesians and said, that the Father may grant you to be strengthened in your inner man by His Spirit. That you might get a better view of the Father. Weigh it out. It may not fit your tradition. Maybe it does. So I run into people and say, hey, that's what I've always believed. You know what I say? As clear as it is in the Bible, you need a lot of help to mess it up. <laughs> right? 
It takes an educated theologian to mess it up for you. He, he, I'm quoting Joe here now. Don't get Joe. Get him. Don't get me. Love y'all. Would you stay?